news. I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And uh, welcome to another edition of Space News uh, for the week of January 31st to, I don't know, February 7th. I guess it's every two weeks now, so. Space News every other week. Every other week, your old, so. Your old favorite segment we axed is back every other week. Every other week, <laughs> half the time, to keep you on your toes. It's okay. Space is infinite, so, I mean. It's true. All right, well, we can, we we got, can do it anytime. <laughs> we got some uh, interesting space news this week. We've got uh, first up a stupendous crater on Mars looks eerily like a tree stump. Uh, if you want to check this out, uh, you can head to sciencealert.com um, in the space tab. This one's really cool. So that's a, a giant crater on Mars. And uh, if you look, there's rings similar to that of a, a tree stump. And no, these aren't lines that you can tell how old the crater is. But the one thing interesting about it is that they believe these lines were formed by frozen water, like frozen water, as it would freeze, it would expand, and, and uh, as it would melt, it would contract, and it would slowly push these lines. So what they're saying that even though this crater where, it's, where Mars is currently at in its axis isn't likely to have frozen water, but this is evidence that there could have been or still might be water in this crater. So it's so not an ancient giant tree stump i no. mean is it maybe i'm not gonna say it's not we're not there I, right i've seen a couple pictures of some on earth that look like ancient giant tree stumps maybe this you know human started on mars well i don't know how wide this one is but it would be uh it would be in the running for largest tree in the in the universe i think <laughs> fucking monster crazy how did they get this fantastic photo it looks really great I don't know, one of the orbiters right on a camera <laughs> somebody just Put it up there with a the camera. Fucking camera, it, obviously. It, they had attached a telescope to their iPhone and shot, pointed at Mars. Got it, got so, it. So okay. like, if you look at the little line in the corner there, it says one kilometer. So I'm guessing like just by eyeballing it, it's probably like six or seven kilometers wide in diameter. It's a big fucking least. tree. So that'd be a huge tree. <laughs> uh, you know, very interesting stuff. We're learning more and more about Mars. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, if we start finding water and then, you know, I'm like I said, Baby, I'm shoot. I'm setting the bar low for my lifetime. Simple life. That's what I want to find, right? We don't need complex. A single cell. I'll be happy. I can die a happy man. We find life on another planet. That orbiter is called ESA slash Roscoma. Was it Rosco Roscosmos X Exo Mars Trace Gas Orbiter C A S S I S instrument? Mouthful. Yes. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, so we got the uh, an awesome. abandoned SpaceX rocket will crash into the moon within weeks, um, ruining our cheese supply. There's going to be a cheese shortage worldwide. Hmm. What kind of cheese grows on the moon? Swiss. Ah. Oh. Duh. Okay. <laughs> All those holes. <laughs> this was so. This rocket was deployed in 2015, uh, and it put NASA satellite called the Deep Space Climate Observatory into orbit. Um, Make. Yeah, well, then the acronym's DSCOVR. I'm like, what's the VR? Like, I know Virtual that... Virtual reality, it's fake. Yeah, hey, <laughs> this is a metaverse rocket. Um, but I guess they've... This rocket has just been in kind of like a, a chaotic orbit ever since. They basically just been drifting there, floating around, pinballing everywhere. And now scientists have... Uh, they just like slingshot off Earth's. I mean, that's. I mean, that's how most stuff. I mean, it's how NASA got to the moon. It's like, did it just slingshot off of the, the gravity well of Earth and like whoosh I, towards the moon? Maybe I don't like. I have no idea. They just. It's just out there, fucking wilding around. I thought it was some sort of moon slingshot or something where they're like, you know, Armageddon stuff. But. I well, that's how. It, I mean, that's how we got to the moon in the first place. It's like. The yeah, slingshot. you guys sling use the gravity. Yeah, they were where the position of that satellite probably is probably a far out satellite, like a distant orbit. Yeah. Not like a, not like a low earth. So yeah, yeah probably deep space after, climate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After they dropped it. Yeah. For the last six years, it's been slingshotting around earth and now it's getting pulled in by the moon. So just finally reached escape velocity. And it's like, whoosh. it's it, scientists it are me. estimating that it's going to crash onto the dark side of the moon, uh, March 4th. And I'm like, how convenient that this yeah. fake rocket <laughs> crashes where we're not going to see like how awesome would it have been if they're like hey listen with a good pair of binos if you're out there at like 9 9 30 
you might see this thing crash into the surface of the moon. Yeah, so uh, Transformers are going to be pissed. Yeah, right into their base. <laughs> what what are the chances that it hits the... The moon hut? Where's the, where, no, where's the Chinese <laughs> rover right now? <laughs> Just crashes right on it. Oh, man, that would suck so hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you a one in a billion a chance. so mad. Stray rocket just blows up the orbiter. Huge-ass international rover. incident. <laughs> Well, it's no different. Like, it, you know, hasn't China, like, you know, we've talked about a couple of times, of just, they're dropping satellites recklessly, and they're just like, hey, heads up. Space is up. Is no rules in space. Yeah, everyone knows that. <laughs> uh, next up, we have astronomer, blah, 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 astronomers blah, blah, blah. detect strange signals we've never seen before in our cosmic vicinity. Um, the interesting one about this one is it's only 4,000 light years away which is that's nothing you know, it's nothing man for a hop skip and a jump that's a road trip easy uh this thing you know flashes radio waves for 30 to 60 seconds uh every 18.18 minutes precise so they're uh we're, we're not sure but this is one of those like it's pretty close they you know the word gobsmacked was thrown around quite a bit uh Listen, I'm not even going to pretend to know that I understand any of it. I think the culprits right now are, uh, you know, some sort aliens? of dead pulsar. Aliens? Uh, aliens. Yeah. No. <laughs> I think, yeah, the main the main suspects are, are the ones that they have seen before. They haven't seen one like this one before, but most of the ones that resemble it are the, uh, the magnetars, like the collapsed dead stars that kind yeah, of spin yeah, on thing. Funny. But... Um, I do remember reading this one interesting story about a uh, race of extraterrestrials that essentially use like pulsars and magnetars as types of like bombs. So as booby traps as a planet. So you'd have it spin on oh, a precise cool. axis. So when some, and then when something arrived in orbit or within the solar system, then it would trigger that thing because it's so precise. Like these things, they, they space spin, mine. Thing. Yeah. Like a space booby trap. You know, Dude, it's you like put something C there that you space. didn't want anybody to find or something like that. That's and then it's like, so I don't know. It was, it was a pretty cool concept. I thought it was pretty neat. You have these things because they spin at such a precise, they have such precise movements and, uh, and timing. So it's like if you went in there and anything disrupted it, I guess, in, yeah, in fiction, I suppose. There's probably other factors that would be taken into account. You heard but it here it first. Rad. It's a space they, mine. Yeah. Um, my... Astronomers have named this Gleamax J one six two seven five nine point five dash five two three five zero four point three, uh, but we'll just call it Gleamax J for short. We don't need the coordinates. Uh, uh, pretty interesting. Clever, I mean, clever name. We're we're finding. I remember you know years ago when we were getting the first fast radio bursts, and now it seems like we're picking these things up every other week and discovering new things. So it's oh, yeah, there's frequencies shooting all around space all the time from every direction, and we're just starting to get the tools now to yeah, witness it. Speaking of tools, the James Webb Space Telescope oh is shit reached its destination. It's in the what what are those zones called? That's one thing that I Lagrange, I, Lagrange, Lagrange yeah. points. Or Lagrange Lagrange. points. So there's basically I learned five that points. I learned that from Gundam. Did you really? <laughs> Gundam. Yeah. yeah. Lagrange points. I learned that from the Gundam series. So there's basically five points around Earth where I guess these points they're perfectly in balance between the sun and the earth, where like the gravi the gravitational Doesn't... force of both like kind of works off each other. So you can maintain yep. stationary orbit without just like decaying yeah. into falling into the sun or falling into the earth. It just keeps you perfectly in place at these yeah. five locations in in the gundam series like these are the point like those are the points where you find all the uh because <clears throat> in that in that universe you have like space colonies and it had been a con it's been a concept for a long time if you had an orbital space colony you want to put it out there then these would be the ideal locations the for them spots. to be put so you'd have like you know almost uh, a perfect place. It's a big pocket. It's not like it's, it's, there's like a, it's a big yeah, it's area. Not, yeah, it's they're not still, like they're not symbol, small, right? Yeah. yeah. It's not like a tiny little spot. So you could fit a whole bunch of stuff in there, but they would re remain relatively stable and you wouldn't have to, you know, spend a lot of fuel maintaining adjustments and stuff. So the or James like Webb is off into deep space or something. L2 Lagrange point two. Far side right. of the moon. And, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna stay there. Uh, 
we're probably not going to get our first photos back for about five months from what i read but uh it's sitting uh 1.5 million kilometers away and it's it's ready to go baby it's go time. just enough That's... time for them to scrub all the pictures of aliens yeah well, yeah it's gonna be five five months of photoshop before you see those mm -hmm. pictures yeah. yeah even though the pictures are going to be in every spectrum but visible light i believe yeah well, yeah. listen, watch this. <laughs> it's an, yeah, it's an IR telescope. This is an interesting thing. NASA Webb Telescope on Twitter released this video. How are they getting that video of the James Webb Telescope? Riddle me that. It's already operational. They Look have another that. camera pointed back at it. Right? They're lying to us. It's 100%. It's all fake. David Weiss was right the whole, whole time. Yeah. That's <laughs> nothing but a firecracker, baby. <laughs> This is pretty cool. This is a, I would say this is the greatest collaborative space effort of our time. Dude. Mm -hmm. Getting this out there. The, the next will be the next, if they do do that project Artemis and land back on the moon, that, that will be bigger. An but international, yeah. An international moon base would be, that'd be the cool. next step or something that'd like so, that. But. Yeah. They're going to have that, the gateway and then hopefully a moon colony. Cause I mean, day. you think the, I think the, the collider, you know the Hubble, but this thing is you know right now it's it's this is peak human just everything everything that had to go right to get that up there yeah like the chances it was, it was low chance and they they pulled it off so there's there's a yeah. there's a chance that this thing finds life within the first within five months we could be getting you know that this thing's detecting signs of life well it would yeah, you might detect uh, signs of habitable planets or planets that are more similar to Earth. You can yeah. find a lot of planets like that. That's a possibility. Um, one of the other things I think is interesting, since the it's going to be able to look so far uh, into the universe or out into the universe, uh, you can uh, you can definitely count on a number of papers being published about uh, like the confirmation of a lot of theories about how planets how stars form, how all of these things that are have pretty much just been simulations or they've been like math mathematical problem, like mathematical formulas that just like, okay, this might exist. Cause I, I, I said it before, I was like black holes, we'd never seen one and we never confirmed that an actual black hole existed. They, they existed mathematically as a mathematical assisted, uh, you know, a mathematical probability. But when we got that actual picture, like in the visible light, like where they had yeah. that actual picture, like just a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, it's going to be like that. 2019 and or something. Like it wasn't long ago at all. So it's it's looking out into the universe is going to tell us on like how the universe, because when you're looking farther out into space, you're technically looking back in time and you're yep. going to be able to see a lot of stuff like how things developed and the formation of entire galaxies and stars and all that cool shit. It's going to be And you're weird. also going to receive alien radio signals. You're gonna get their satellite TV. Oh, right. shows Thank they're watching. God. I'm gonna add six thousand channels to our to our <laughs> cable boxes. Everybody's cable bills are going up. Galactic satellite television. Sweet, it'd be awesome. All right, next up, All uh, you know, this is a little older, but it happened right after last space news, um, the Tonga eruption. Mm. Uh, gigantic Wild. um you know you know it's not much space news but the way i was tying this into space news is i want to talk about like you know earth is in space earth is space <laughs> but it, yeah, i mean it did affect there. stuff out in space technically it did well the other thing is i'm like you know what even you know maybe a decade ago 15 years ago catching this on any kind of camera would probably be unheard of have to be super lucky but we're getting to a day and age where stuff like this will never be missed. Like if there was a Tunguska event again or something like that or a big eruption, we are going to catch footage of it uh, like this. Let's go in for a little closer look. Uh, let's bring it in. Let's look at this here. We've got Mega Dan, but that's okay. That's uh, how it goes. Look at this blast here. So that's a satellite image of oh, Tunguska. Dude, it looks like or, it's a massive... Tunguska. Just the Tonga. And that's from space, and it looks that big. That must have, yeah. It must have vape. I think it vaporized one of those islands, right? Like it just—it's gone. I would assume that. Was that it underwater? 
I think this was or was it underwater? Yes, it was yeah. underwater. But I would but imagine whatever that was under that water is gone. Is gone. It did. Yeah. Co- I'm pretty sure it covered a number of. It did cover a number of places like an ash. Like there were volcano re- volcanic related problems. Oh, 100 percent. Well, you Lots can see that stuff. cloud instantly of like that, right? It's just Pyro getting curled up there, or whatever. Yeah. and you can see the shock waves like moving across the crowd. Like it, it's it's absolutely insane. And they even had like. They had a uh, like pressure level sensors detect the sound like it's below human hearing, but they could detect it in the Yukon, Canada, it's like twelve thousand kilometers away. It's wild. Um, I mean, it does still, and it still qualifies as space news because um, a lot of scientists are actually, you know, looking at the like you can see how the shock waves travel through our atmosphere, and then I think a lot of people forget that the. Um, or don't think about the fact that the atmosphere is there's more layers than you just think of the one there's there's tons of layers that reach out like farther far away from Way our planet yeah. um you know one of those being kind of like the ionosphere and, and those places and that uh, huge events like this can um cause uh, ripples and and fluctuations within those uh layers and they were talking about how uh, specifically like something like this can affect the ionosphere to a point where like it will actually disrupt some uh communications and like gps like gps would be affected by some like globally would be affected by this because it, it just messes everything up like it throws up so much like charged particles into the atmosphere and beyond that it will kind of like mess with stuff I, i'm not sure to what degree uh some of the articles weren't really clear but it's like it's definitely detectable like on a global well, scale I'll, I'll go ahead and say if you were anywhere near that explosion your phone's probably not working <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, True. that's. <laughs> probably, yeah. not you're wrong. probably not if you're standing I'm right next wrong. to it. You're yeah, probably dead wrong. at that point. Uh, this is interesting. A Chinese satellite just grappled another and pulled it out of orbit. Um. First off, this is a badass patch for a satellite. Um, but basically, there, uh, China now has a tugboat satellite. And in theory, like when I when I first started reading this, I'm like, this seems like a good thing. So you could, you know, grapple onto other ones and tug them, you know, out of the danger zone of, you know, causing what's that? What's the effect where you know if one of these things crashes, Kessler the Ke- uh, Kessler effect Kessler effect the Kessler one crashes, syndrome it would just cause a cascading, you know, problem. So it would kind of make sense to start figuring out how we can get some of these things out of the fucking way. Uh, I think concerns are, is that, you know, perhaps they're going to be using this for a military application. Right. There's There's always that aspect. Yeah. It's always, it's always a concern that something like this, because um, they didn't really tell anybody they were doing this. It's just, you know, people managed to catch the people who observed satellites that are in orbit uh, reported that they had one on, they were tracking one satellite that had been as pretty is an abandoned satellite. doesn't really have any purpose up there anymore. And it like, it had moved from its normal orbit or where it had been its previous orbit into what they called like a great, it's the graveyard orbit. Where essentially, like, that's where they put satellites, like, all dead satellites, kind of, they move them out into there. Um, or, like, they get maneuvered, usually, like, you'd get them maneuvered there. But this is actually, like, the Chinese launched a satellite specially designed to, like, just go up there and grab it and then kind of push it over over there. So, yeah, the uh, there is there are people who are kind of sounding alarm bells being like, this is the... Inc- we hear all this stuff now about, you know, Russia shooting down satellites. China's got a satellite kind of uh, tugboat that you could potentially disrupt communications with just up there because I mean, if it's up there and it's doing stuff, it's like, you can't really stop it. Like, you know, by the time you shoot it down, it would take, it would take like hours, minutes, you know, like to, to shoot it down or something. Um, well, and the thing is, yeah. I'm like, you know what, like, it's one of those it's it's honestly if it is safer military application it's still a perfect ploy because you need to this something like this needs to be done like we're, yeah. we're getting you know we we've talked about other times where we're getting like dangerous levels of debris up there right where yeah. we need to start figuring out what to do collect the trash or something so if you know if they're kind of doing that you know, power to yeah. them. As far as, the yeah, time. as far as I can recall, like off the top of my head, this is the first time I've seen like a, a, a real, so, like not a solution, but a kind of, 
uh, a remedy. You know, yeah, effort and effort to to kind of clean up space. <laughs> yeah, you just need a really big net between a few satellites, and it just slowly accelerates and just scoops it all up. And once it gets it all, just shoots yeah. itself into the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Trash bomb. <laughs> Just takes out all satellites in, in its process. Just restart. Yeah. Cool. Uh, that's all space we got for cool. space news, but uh, we've got a little community news uh, in a new segment that we're going to call Fearite News. Fearite News. Uh, so this is kind of where we're going to kind of give you guys some updates on what's going on in the in the world uh, of the Fearites and, uh, you know, kind of ATT uh you know, back alleys. This, this is where you'll get you'll get news of when the running challenge happens. When you know we're both after the when we go do live shows, if that ever happens. Yeah, this I'll is tell this you is here. where you'll uh, hear. Yeah, about whatever it. else we can think of. Uh, so first off, you know, uh, it, if you don't know now, you know we had a fantasy football league, actually two fantasy football leagues, uh, because they were so popular. We had the winners just announced. Uh, the winners were Ron's Ponderings. Nice. And Bigfoot Dick Punch. Bigfoot Dick Punch. What'd they win? Uh, they won two custom ATT football jerseys. I think it says the champ is here, something on the back. Uh, they look pretty cool. Andrew sent us pictures. Um, Ron Ponderings and Bigfoot Dick Punch. If you haven't already reached out to give Andrew your address, I know he messaged you and you're listening to this, reach out, give him your address. We have your jerseys. We would love to ship it to you. Be sent ASAP. Yeah, yeah, that was um, fun. And uh, who lost? I I don't know. That's not confirmed. We're not gonna <laughs> we're not gonna talk about that. We're Confident. not the last. We're last not about place. we're not about pointing out losers in this that, podcast. That's, that's need to know that, information that you don't need to know. That's <laughs> that incorrect. Pointing out losers is what we do. Loser of the first <laughs> annual <Yes>. fantasy <laughs> football league is your boy, Raiden. All right, Dragon. <laughs> first Craig. off. We're going to do a dedicated... Braden the Dragon Craig. Braden the Dragon Craig. <laughs> Space Conspirators no or Sports Conspirators number three is going to be about the ATT Fantasy Football League and how I was <laughs> duped into picks by Andrew for the first six weeks of the Fantasy Football. And we're going to go through the stats and we're going to look. And he kept telling me, no, don't pick that. Don't listen to Yahoo. And I lost every single game. <laughs> You know what? You got you got a case there. You got a case. Yeah. There might have been a little uh, conflict of interest there. Andrew picking your team, where the loser is going to do something absolutely terrible. We haven't figured out your complete punishment yet, but it's coming. Yeah, whatever. It, it can't be as bad as just living my life. So <laughs> <laughs> just day in day out. So no yeah. big deal. Um, next up, listen. If you don't know now, you know. The boys are coming to Austin, Texas, Sands Dan, probably, most likely. 100%. We're going to Austin. We're going to be there from March 2nd. We'll be leaving on the 7th, so pretty much 2nd to 6th. We're going to be in Austin, around Austin. There will be, well, we'll obviously be at the bar Friday and Saturday. Bar to be determined. Fan meetup. I don't know if we'll bring some prizes or we'll have a door draw or something. Sure. Something what we're, we're gonna have we're gonna have some fun. Yeah, we're gonna be you know we're, we we might schedule um, some ghost tours or some something while we're there, um, some other kind of events. But you know, we're gonna have uh, it all posted on social media, and we'll probably have some ads uh, as we get closer to and we start to finalize our plans. Literally, flights were just booked. Just we're booked coming. them today. Got we're, our goddamn COVID insurance. We're coming. Right now, we're living on the streets when we get there. We don't know. <laughs> that's, that's how little <laughs> we know right now. Uh, yeah. But we're coming. That's a fact. And, so, um, and re the reason we chose Austin and Texas in particular is it's our most listened to state. It's right in smack dab in the middle of three gigantic cities, San Antonio, Houston, and Dallas. The Texas Triangle. Texas Triangle, you know? Smack now, dab in the there. middle of tri Craig's Triangle. Yeah. Uh, now, the other thing is, if you're listening to this, you're like, man, I wish they picked my city. Well, we would have if you told more of your friends to listen to the show. So Get more uh, people if you want us to, to come to your there. city, uh, the next pod trip, uh, uh, you know, the one of the best persuading factors is to be the city with the most downloads. So, uh, Yep, you got to tell your friends. That's the only, that's the only, next pod trip at this rate will be 2024, so. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> if we're going to yeah, have a history, uh, well, hopefully not. Let's hopefully not. We'll try. On, we'll go, try and get back on our two pod trips a year schedule. Hopefully, yeah, we'll see. Uh, next up, we got a little bit of conspiracy roundup. Um, we had if you know it, it's very few times is Canadian news make international headlines. And very this, few. This past weekend, if you didn't know, there was uh, 2.3 million trucks. They circled the globe twice, led by Jesus and Bigfoot, and they took down Parliament. And uh, Canada, I believe, is now run by Mothman. I'm not sure, you know. Pretty sure Canada runs the world now. Yeah, I, I think we're in charge. Uh, I think that's what happened. Um, basically, no, pretty much, JFK pretty mu- Jr. is the new yeah. prime minister. <laughs> okay. Pretty much, I mean, Canadians got a long fuse, and uh, there was some recent border announcement for truckers at an already tight supply chain issue where you cannot go across the border either way canada to u.s or u.s to canada without being a vaccinated trucker or core doing the quarantine that just came into effect so these people thought they were been essential this whole two years they they had some good arguments they don't really talk to anyone they don't stop they're not congregating anyways them's the rules and they didn't like it so it started this big Cross Canada convoy, as Braden said, some people said ridiculous amount of trucks. I don't, I actually don't know how many trucks. I were think the needed. number of like actual semis was like, I think it was, I think now I, no one jumped down my throat, but I think it was like around 200, maybe a little less. And there was some RVs that weren't counted. And there was, there was some a lot like of people driving cars. trucks. Yeah. Um, but either way, either way, it led to. It ended up being Canadians for their own purpose. So every family, every community throughout Canada had their own gripe with the government and COVID restrictions. So it caught fire as it, be- it became a grievance of everyone to be like, we want to follow the rest of the world and hopefully ending vaccine passports mandates and kind of getting back to a sense of normalcy. Some people had great expectations for what was going to happen. Some people... Obviously, whenever there's a, I think there might be like ten or fifteen thousand protesters, which is for Canada, probably the most ever, or one of the most. And some people are hoping that, uh, you know, to overthrow the government, as, as what happens with these type of events. There were some bad apples there. Obviously, they were defacing our boy Terry Fox. I mean, you can't be doing that. Well, you know, like this, I'll say this. It, it you know. This is one of those issues. COVID obviously has become a political issue. You know, it's it's split people, you know, and I, with how Canada kind of handled the last round of lockdowns. It's bad. There, it, it was bad. I'm a person who is, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got double, I'm double vax. I believe in the vaccines. Uh, I, but when we were getting the evidence of, you know, Omicron and what was happening, um, some of the decisions our government made, you were like, well, where's the science in that? There's like none, actually. We're just doing this now. And there was like no evidence. Because we've to, done it before. Uh, you know, to shut down fitness facilities and stuff in, in, in British Columbia. I don't know about other places. But there wasn't an evidence that could tie fitness facilities to outbreaks. They just said there was a likelihood of outbreaks there because that's where 18 to 55-year-olds meet up. And it's like, well, so they also meet up at work and anywhere else because that's the entire working force of British Columbia is 18 to 55. Like, that's everyone. You you're, you're, you just, everyone is included in that. So this, I think it's really kind of driven a wedge between people of people like, yeah, we should follow this. And then the other issue is that, you know, there's some ne'er-do-wells who started this or were involved in the beginning stages of the truck convoy. Um, some extremists that have white nationalist ties. So now you have people who are like, they like the idea of the convoy, but then they're like, well, yeah, I like that idea, but I don't like the people who are running the convoy like this. So now it's, it's splitting the issue of like, if you're for the trucks, you're for racism. And if you're against the trucks, you're against racism. And the truckers are like, well, it's, we're not racist, but there's some shady stuff going on. One of the shadiest things going on is that there was one of the largest GoFundMes in Canadian history. Uh, It had raised $9 million, $9 million. And the founder 
right now is MIA with the money. Well, well, GoFundMe locked the money, and they released a million dollars only. I thought. Uh, the lady Tam- Tamara, what's her Tamara name? Tamara something. Tamara something. She is currently MIA, and one of the other you know members who has some <laughs> sketchy ties, Pat King, uh, has been saying that like, yeah, they can't get a hold of her. It's not looking good. Um, you know, there was some news of other ne'er do wells going to Ottawa and they were basically being like, Hey, the restaurants here won't let us in without masks because that's the rules. So they were going to the homeless shelter and taking, harassing the people there to get food from the homeless shelter. So it's like, uh, you know, you have good and bad with all these parties, but it's just one of those issues where it's like the mandates I believe have been kind of handled wrong in Canada uh and the last round for sure the last round for sure and you've driven people into you know you're starting to push people into groups with these extremists and i'm like this isn't gonna end well for anyone well, let's just let's just let's just stop there because th- yeah there it, it did attract some extremist groups with any event of this size especially in the nation's capital and so everyone's going to use it for their own purpose but let's it, our local representation from government was there at parliament because it started on yep. it started today yeah well and that's what i'm like, saying i'm not everyone but i'm saying know, people she, are going like they're she had she had a big press conference today in Kelowna, and she's like i was there i went out and i talked with protesters and it's 99 out of 100 are just canadians who got caught up in the movement they're pissed off their business has been closed they just want to go back to work they don't that's it that's most of the people and then social media mainstream News pushes the narrative that this is a right-wing extremist movement, all of them, and they lump everyone together, and then now everyone hates the movement, and you're like, <laughs> what? people are just people are just upset. It's been there, a long two years. People are upset. I'll agree with that. Happened. People are upset. There is a cringy video of a woman going on stage in Ottawa trying to make your point that mainstream media is painting them all as white nationalists, and she goes, I want to know. We're all Canadians here. <sighs> Who here is a white supremacist? And she turns, and the first person she gives the mic to, he goes, I'm a white supremacist. And then you hear <laughs> a group of people go like, yay, and literally cheer. To Then she's like, oh, this is super fucking awkward. Like, Ooh. whoopsies. So I'm like, like I said, <laughs> and I mean, those those are the clips that go viral. You know what I mean? So That's it's what like, I mean. Those the are the ones you see. Co- optics coming out of I'm like, um, you know what? Like, make- you don't see the people who went and cleaned Terry Fox after you don't see the people who cleaned up the garbage on the, you don't, you don't see the good stuff. You always hear all the bad stuff. Um, it reminds me of the, the kind of the problems that arose around, uh, when they had the, um, fuck, what was it called? The thing on wall street, occupy wall street, occupy wall street. Yeah. Uh, the occupy wall street was a, is a, it's a good great idea. Movement. It was a, is a you know had good ideas and stuff like this, but they lost in the messaging. Like they never had a singular. Like there's there is there are times where a, a message is good when it's just a faceless. Like it is all of these people. We are the movement. Da da da. But then you have to get they they didn't focus their message. They didn't have like they didn't have like distinct demands like a mouthpiece to kind of give yeah. out this stuff and and vocalize their concerns in a clear and concise manner. And so when that is all up for grabs, when the narrative is up for grabs, yes, the media is going to capitalize on that. They're going to get 100%. the clicks. They're going to get the they they want the people They're tuning money, in. They, and they want to be money. they want to make people more angry. Like 100%. that's what that's what sells. That's what people that's what sells is rage. Now, and, and now so <laughs> let's just let's just all remember, I mean, 3 of the 4 on the podcast are Canadian. We are blessed with living in countries where congregating in protest of government and or laws and or anything you're not happy with is legal and should be encouraged. And there's some people are saying these people, everyone who is protesting is a trash bag. And like people are just fed up. That's your right to protest. Let's just leave it at that. Don't, don't go fight your neighbors because they're all of a sudden they are angry because their business yeah. has been closed for two years and they're getting like on the me, movement. Where you assume 99% of people are trash bags. Yeah. Mm. Right. Everyone sucks All together. Time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I don't think, uh, unfortunately, the truckers aren't going to get their way. Um, they're well, going to have to find I mean, new, new routes. See, they, they all mobbed Parliament on Sunday and Parliament's closed Sunday. So it's kind of like, eh, it's kind of weird. Weird day to pick. <laughs> Listen, I'm not personally, I'm not a fan on 
I'm not a fan on government intervention on private business. What you do at the international border, that's the government's job. But like a private business down the street, when you close them down for two years, repeatedly up and down, open, closed, half capacity, full capacity, closed, yeah. outdoor dining only. It gets, it gets gets people mad. And after two years, it gets fucking Here, a, little, uh, the thing. a little edgy. This, for, definitely in BC, this came down to if you have enough money, you can stay open. And if you don't, you must close or we will fine you until you don't have any money. Uh, yep. Case in point was you have a kid that plays hockey, you can't play hockey. But if you're professional, you can continue to play hockey and you can continue to travel across the border to play hockey. But you can still pack arenas full of people. Yeah, and you can have 8,000 people in the arena, but you can't have 40 people to go watch a, your your children play hockey. Same thing Same thing in the United States. You got college. You got college. Yeah. You had pro football stadiums just packed full of people, and so, it's like, okay. There's a lot to be mad about, <laughs> but I really think – I've said this so many times, but I really think, fuck, we're almost there, man. Once I, spring, once winter season climbs, crests. Oh, baby. Sun's out, guns out this sun's year, Sun's out. Man. Let's go, oh, baby. It's done. Uh, this one was interesting. Uh, the Spotify ultimatum. Uh, Neil Young uh, basically said, hey, listen, I'm sick of Joe Rogan and this misinformation. It's me or Joe Rogan, and Spotify said, well, I hope Neil Young does remember that Spotify don't need him around anyhow. And they just pulled his music. They're like, all right, sorry, we hope you change your mind, but I, Yeah, I saw, I saw a bunch of stuff pop up about that. Um, was it Joni Mitchell? Joni yeah, Mitchell. She, joined, she joined Neil Young. Um, I, saw, I saw a quick mention of Nickelback. Uh, is that true? I, like, <laughs> there was, I a, there was a, a, no, there was a joke. <laughs> That might no. have been a joke. Like that, oh, I think Dan, that was there, a joke. There was there was a joke that says if Spotify if Spotify doesn't pull Joe Rogan, Nickelback's putting more music on or something. Well, that was the James Blunt said that too. Yeah, I'm or, sure that joke was said a bunch of times. But yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, but yeah, the stock <laughs> of Spotify because obviously any controversy scares investors, so it dropped 25. I don't know how quickly it's rebounded, but I'm sure it will. I mean, maybe yeah. not all the way right away, but I mean, Joe Rogan offered. A, you know what? Good on Joe Rogan. You could say what you want about him. He today offered an apology. He says, yeah, maybe I, I should have had more people on both sides of the debate back to back. Like this guy's got this view. He says vaccines don't work. Let's bring on a guy who's very much pro vaccine. And I'm, he's like, I'm fine having the, if I'm talking about these controversial su subjects, having a disclaimer at the episode. So he did something that mainstream news doesn't do is he apologized and said, I'll try and change and do better. At yeah, least he did that. And I, I mean, yeah, if he puts his, he dude, put he, his money where his mouth is, I'd be happy. Gotta, like, listen, if he has a good guest on, I, I watch. I, I'm more interested in when he has a guest that I'm into than his show entirely. But you got to give it to him. He is, he is in uncharted waters for a human. Oh more yeah. More people watch and tune in to him for fucking news than the news. Yeah. Right. It's he's crazy. A more. I, He's just a guy who talks to people. He doesn't know he what the fuck he's bugs. talking about. At one point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and he and so he was he a game went, show host. <laughs> yeah. Listen, he he is in uncharted waters for a human. Um, so I'm like, you know what? I I watched Apology. Um, you know what? Like, uh, I don't know. You could probably lump him in there with like. I mean, you had like Howard Stearns and, and not, those kinds of things. Like never Howard Stearns was not, a big network. Like, never on this level. Yeah, but I'm saying like back then, like back in the prime days. Yeah, like, he he was big, dude. There was never a time where people went, "I believe Howard Stern more than I believe the news." Well, he did, yeah, but he didn't have like the well, we didn't have the reach that we did yeah. back then. And it'd be so, something like that. So and, I don't, yeah. An interesting thing though with the Neil Young thing, this is one thing that I found interesting about that is that because I remembered that he. And I don't know why this stuck in my head, but he sold 50% of his music rights and the income interest to the, his music to a UK based investment firm. It's called like Hip Hop Aginus or something. And basically, <laughs> they buy up rights for music, classic music, because they think that, like stocks and stuff, this music, the stock of these classic songs and great artists is going to rise and rise in the future. So I found it interesting that he just tanked. They say he lost 40% of his income. So he would have also crashed. Um, one second. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Hip Hypnosis uh, Sons Fund Limited, a UK investment firm uh, founded by manager turned investor Merrick Mercuritis. 
but he would have tanked their stock, like their income from, because they own 50% of the worldwide copyright and income. That's funny. <laughs> Just right. Whoopsies. So like, would he be liable for a move like that? Because he's now hurt. But it's the, uh, it's the other 50%. It's not the music that he pulled off of Spotify. Like, I think he pulled like, I, I mean, he, that's the, he pulled he the music that he owned. He didn't pull anything though, Dan. Spotify Spotify pulled him. They did. They took a move, and Spotify went. All right, they pulled Neil Young's work down. Right, but he didn't. He but they said they would do that for him because he asked, and he or he was going to do it himself. See, well, I that's, just that's what I don't. That's what I don't know is because I mean Neil Young was part of, I'm sure major record labels. So like, who's got a piece of his music? Is he entitled to pull his own music? I think no, so. Like no I see. I think he owns. Like he owns a right. Like he sold fifty percent of things, but he retains the rights to like that music that it depends that... it really depends on his contract because usually record labels own the master copy mm -hmm. unless you are had a great i think he's one of the uh, i think he's one of the outliers like i think he's one of the ones he's not a he's not a bruce springsteen he's not a uh like a what's the other guy like oh god i can't remember the name um Either all way. along the watchtowers bob dylan yeah that one <laughs> all right let's uh why don't we uh wild stuff let's get into some ufo news or ufo review i don't remember what we call this let's bring it on over to our closer look here um this first video is coming in from hopskin Hop hopkinsville kentucky ky is that oh, kentucky fucking gremlins that's that's the fucking gremlins on the roof really yeah. The Kelly Hopkinsville, Clarksville, that's or right. Hopkinsville, Kelly Encounter. Yeah. Uh, so this first one, it came in uh, January 26, 2022. A triangular shaped craft, which seems sometimes to hover, dive and bank and becomes brighter. Three bright white lights and red blinking backlight. Um, you know how we feel about Ooh. blinking red lights, but let's take blinking a peek. Blinking red lights, let's take a peek. Uh, first off... You know, fucking lands landscape that man. Uh, we're looking three mm. red lights. I mean, that looks suspiciously like a plane banking. It's a goddamn plane. It's a uh, thirteen. It's only thirteen seconds, so we've already watched it twice. <laughs> uh, it, it does look like it's a, a plane goddamn plane banking. Yeah, it's a plane. It's, a, it's just get, it's either just getting dark or it's just getting lights right in that in between zone. So the lights are still very visible, but yeah, they must. You can be almost, you can almost see airport. the wing. Yeah, you can almost see the wing. Yeah, hey, give your head a shake before you send some shit like this in to us. All right, this is insulting. I mean, insulting. they didn't. They didn't know what it was. It was a UFO to them. It was a UFO. Them, you know what? They didn't, know what they didn't know what it was. It's a plane. So, you know, uh, if you if is, you don't it, know, the Wright brothers created the first plane. <laughs> <laughs> and since then we've been just extrapolating on that feat and there you have it is uh what we're doing today with it <laughs> it's an airplane plane uh, it's very it's very that's much a one that's resembles a, one a plane around. that's a one all a, around can we give zeros yeah we can give zero that deserves a zero that's a zero we're giving a zero to that uh this zero next 100 percent plane 100 percent plane or weather balloons swamp gas venus uh Ball lightning this one's from Henderson, Nevada. It comes in January 27th, 2022. Hundreds of small lights that look like little balls of fire flew over Henderson and Las Vegas and lasted for about 25 minutes. Uh, let's take a peek at this one. Hopefully it's landscape. And of course it's not. Six. I don't know why it's not. There we go. All right. So we got some strange lights. Oh, well, they're a little more spread out. Multiple, like almost in a weird formation. I really wish he was outside because I can tell he's shooting this through a screen or a window. Yeah. And it makes me think that are we just getting reflection of lights? Are those bulbs? Those are really looking oh, like they bulbs. Oh, kind of look. Yeah, they do. Right? When you look at it, it looks like it's a reflection of, of light bulbs. Like like, like his pot lights in his kitchen or something? Yeah. yeah. Like when you look. And I'm not you can saying see, that's... like the way the aura kind of right like, there, like, like the nimbus of light around it, kind of. Yeah. Right. I'm seeing light bulb. But if those aren't light bulbs, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. 
It's hard to say though because are they moving though? Are they I don't. That might be. A, I think that's an effect of the camera, like the, <sighs> him just move because he's moving the camera like all over the place. Okay. Yeah, you, okay. I mean, that's percent. better. Oh, here we go. There you go. All yeah, right. Go. That's interesting. Wait, did you just open the door and they disappeared? Yeah. Well, no. Now you can just see the line of them. Right. They're not getting the glare. Oh, so there, it looks like it almost looks like there's more now, actually. Yeah, they're just okay. They look like drifting, like there's something's twinkling. Man, they they <sighs> move. They move really. When was this? Where, this where was, was this? Um, in Henderson, Nevada, and it was shot on January twenty sixth, twenty twenty two. Henderson's like just outside of Vegas, right? Yeah, and I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit. These things are just drifting. It kind of makes me think China lanterns, except the. You know, no, no Chinese lanterns. They look a little too big, boy. But uh, it's 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 very strange. It's very strange because that's like Starlink doesn't move like that. We would see them, you know, moving more in a line. The, the sky, usually. yeah. So it's uh, very peculiar. If I was looking at this somewhere in BC, I would say that is a ski hill. But like say, I don't think like if I fast forward it, you can see the drifting, right? Like they're drifting up, like. Yeah. And then there's more, right? Here comes four more new ones popping up. Five, six, seven. Like a whole, it almost looks like like they just launched Starlink satellites. Like they haven't gone to formation yet. Yeah, maybe. That's a lot of it, lights. Because they usually launch like 50 at a time. I, I want to issue an apology to whoever sent this that I said light bulbs at the beginning. <laughs> It did well. It no, did. You know I mean, it, 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 it did, did look like it at the start. Yeah, I got to call it as I see it. It looked like I was looking at a reflection of light bulbs, but this is. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we're looking at. Is it UFOs? I I don't know. It it it's not. You know, this isn't giving us the typical UFO like flash, quick moving. It does look like. There's got to be like two fours. There's got to be like twenty twenty lights plus. Yeah, it kind of looks like a satellite array. Like if I ask, but there's we just. I know what Starlink looks like. That's not it. Uh, I've seen a lot of Starlink videos. That's not it. Like you said, could this be something that's not quite in formation yet? They're just launching their, they're working on it kind of thing. I I don't know, but that's uh, that's quite that's a cool. Thing. What do you guys think? Ends. Um, I mean, it looks like it's outside atmosphere. Let's see, what was it? They were launching, and that was January 6th, though. Like, SpaceX did launch 49 Starlink satellites on a Falcon 9 rocket. Well, yeah, this um, is the 26th, so 20 days later. Right. I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, I don't think it's a UFO. I, they, just because of the drifting, I don't think it's an alien. I don't. That's just my. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't have any of the uh, the really the observables that we talked about. Yeah, it's I, just, I, it's not, it, it doesn't appear to be like anti gravity. Doesn't appear to be, uh, mm -hmm. you know, instantaneous movement or any of that. It's just stuff drifting along the along yeah. the way. So it's either yeah, it's either I don't know about satellites. I mean, I would probably go with yeah, Chinese lanterns. I'd have to look into what events were going on that day. That's a um, lot though. You know, when, when's, a lot. When's, high. when's the Chinese New Year? I now, mean, like now, so it could. Is it be January thirty first? I mean, it started already. Like, oh, yeah, it's like a. Could, so could have so it could have been China lanterns. Yeah, it could have. It could Chinese have New China. Year, <laughs> Tuesday, February first. Okay, so no, All but right. like they're getting ready. Or, I mean, they're already kind of celebrating. Why are you wasting lanterns? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why are you wasting wishes? Right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, zero to gimbal. Um, I just look at this and my brain just will not allow me to say that this is aliens. I, this is a hundred percent man-made just by looking at, it. I don't know what it is. I have no idea what it is, but my brain will not let me say that this is unknown technology. I want to say it's satellites. I just don't know. Uh, my for brain that, I give will it two. let me say, my brain will let me t say this is alien drone satellites. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I don't. I, I don't know what it is. I don't. I. I don't know what it is. But it, to me, again, it doesn't. It doesn't give off any of the, uh, the observables that usually catch yeah. with these with the really unusual ones. And so, like, I, I would give it a one because I don't know what it is. It is interesting. It's cool to look at. I don't we know. Got a one, one, two, three. Perfect. Uh, this last video is coming in from uh, Irvin 
Irvine, California. Uh, this was taken on December 17, 2021. The unidentified pulsing lights appear to be part of some mysterious craft. Oh, uh, this yeah. is a two part of they took two videos, one uh, further away and one uh, closer up. So without further ado, uh, there we go. I was hitting the wrong button. Roll it. So we can Are see. We looking at those two lights? Yeah, we can see two faint lights off in the distance, just like pulsating uh, back and forth, seemingly just hovering above a tree. Just left, right, left, right, left, right, not moving. I mean, hard hard to go on, but definitely you can definitely see a what it is. I can't tell if it's you know cloud cover or you know would there be mountains behind there? I don't think so. I don't know which direction they're facing. Where'd you say it was? Irving, California. Irvine, California. Irvine or Irving? Irvine. I don't know. I don't know how they pronounce it. Are they different? Which one's the right? So I'm just saying, is it Irvine, like I-R-V-I-N-E, or yeah. Irvine? And let's go to okay. the second video here, uh, a little closer up. A little, closer. A little brighter. Switch it to landscape mode. You can see yeah, they look, something. Those look like they're flashing. That's it. It's a weird one. It's just hovering. Um, they did say that shortly while filming this, shortly after, a military helicopter did fly over there. Is there a military base in Irving? Irving? Uh, well, I'm sure there's ones in California where, you know, these could be dispatched. Um, you know, looking at... I'd like the to know... I like, well, I would like to know they'd be like, how did you know it was a military helicopter? <laughs> Fucking it said down. United States military yeah. right on the side. Right, that's okay. Yeah, it said Big military with the, on the bottom. They were announcing it while they were flying by. We are the U.S. military helicopter. This is a military helicopter. Please move out of the way. Turn off your cameras. Uh, it's Jesse Ventura on the loudspeaker, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. It's this one's one. interesting. A little bit of mist or something. Yeah. It's the the you know hang up for me is is there a mountain range that way? Is it is it facing a mountain range or is it is this out in the ocean? This would change my you know my perception of it greatly if i knew that there was nothing back there that's a mountain range or anything only because how stationary the object is um so then my brain wants to say that like if it's stationary maybe it's fixed on something and if we if we went back in these conditions we could recreate this night after night kind of thing in in the circum like certain circumstances but however it does look weird i'm gonna give it uh three out of gimbal uh, I would definitely give it a one. It, it to me, it kind of looks like they're they're lights that are shining up. Like it looks like they could possibly be from a light source below, uh, spotlights or something like that. I I don't. Um, the, these lights kind of remind me of the lights that you would see like from a casino. Since it's it's just because of the cloud cover. Like it 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 looks like it's not. Looks like it's light going up and coming down. Not not something that's like behind the clouds or no, something like that. To me, that. to me. Um, I don't know what it is and I'm like, California is not known for like casinos and stuff, but, um, used car dealership. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Dyer, uh, Rick Dyer, Rick Dyer's, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, I, I give it a one cause I, I definitely don't know what it is, but it's not, it's not really moving. Yeah. Um, at least stationary usually is like, to me is it's some type of light source from, from down below. Yeah. I'll give it a two. I don't. I wouldn't say like that's 100 percent a plane, though it could be a plane. The two wingtip lights, yeah, could be, but because of the haze and the distance, could also could be a UFO. But I'm not I'm not going any higher than two until unless I had a better or closer or higher quality shot. All right, uh, let's bring it back to the studio here. All right, that's it uh, for this week in space news. Uh, we're going to be bringing you the best of space news uh, every other week. Uh, anything else before we uh, sound this one off, boys? That is all. Mm -hmm. All right. As we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the skies. Peace out. Peace. To keep up to date with all things alien theorist theorizing, follow us across social media on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, and Facebook. 
For updates on new videos and content on YouTube, don't forget to click like and subscribe and hit that notifications button to keep those eyes on the skies with alien theorists theorizing.